We're now going to look at some simple 2D pocketing from curves. You can see the curve on the right. Now let's imagine that curve is on a drawing, a piece of paper. So the first thing I need to do is to sketch out that particular shape inside of Power Mill. I have new sketching tools for both patterns and boundaries. Here I'm going to create a new pattern from the pattern toolbar. There's a new icon on this toolbar called Curve Editor. When we select this, we go into a new sketching mode. From here, I can create work planes, lines, arcs, as well as many editing functions. I'm going to start by creating some lines, a continuous line in this instance. I use my cursor to select the origin of the work plane. Then I can use the intelligent cursor to go over x 100 millimeters and up in y by 50 millimeters across by 25 now I need to go up by 22.5 so I will not use the intelligent cursor I will simply type 0 22.5 incremental from the last position then using the intelligent cursor I'll touch this point down here and get the theoretical intersection you can see that Power Mill tells me it's found the intersection, so I will click here and down to the bottom. OK, coming out of line, I can see that I have one complete composite curve. And I want to break this into its individual items. So I use the option Split Selected Segments. Now when I make a selection, I can see that all lines are individual. So I'm going to put some fillets into the part starting with a radius 10 on these two corners. So I'll click both adjacent lines. Now I'm going to change the fillet radius to 7.5 and add the remaining fillets. So this shape is still individual entities. What I will do is use the hotkey, Alt, Hick, this chains the individual wireframe items into a single composite curve. The next stage is to add the inner island. In line creation, I will create a rectangle. I'm going to add a fillet radius into the corners, a radius of 10 millimeters. And I will start at a point 25, 25. And then incrementally from that point, I will go 50 millimeters across, 25 millimeters up and I get the rectangle that I'm looking for. Now in previous versions of Power Mill, I would then need to create a feature set, but this is not necessary in Power Mill 9. What I can do is simply accept the shape and then look at creating a toolpath. Let's take a look at the settings. So, we have a new form for curve area clearance. And what I must do is select the pattern, pattern number one, and you can see that Power Mill immediately shows me what area of the shape will be machined. It shades it in this light green color. Now this could be changed, and we could change the start locations simply by dragging the green sphere to any location that I want the machining to start on. I could click this purple arrow to change the cut direction or I could select the yellow tool to determine whether I want to machine a pocket or a boss basically just to swap the directions. When we're happy we click the green tick. The form reappears and I have the options. Where is the floor of this pocket? I've determined that it is at minus 20 millimeters. And the depth of the pocket, in this case, 20 millimeters. I could apply a draft angle to it if I wanted to. And if I'd already cut it with a larger tool, I could simply tell Power Mill that I want to rest machine. So I could select a smaller tool and cut all regions of material that have not yet been cut. These new forms have been designed for ease of use. We no longer have to go to other areas of power mill 
to find, for example, the block. What tool will we use? What boundary? Do we want to cut a compensation? Point distribution? Safe Z heights, leads and links, start point, end point, etc., etc. This is all now available from a single menu. Makes it much easier for the user to scan through the toolpath and take a summary of all of the settings included. When we're happy, we simply click Calculate. And OK. And we have the pockets machined. Very simple.